On the previous broadcast, we looked at Moses' prayer to the Lord in the book of Exodus chapter 33 and how Moses prayed this great prayer that culminate, beloved ones, with these words, show me thy glory. After Moses prayed that prayer, the Lord directed him to go hide in the cleft of a rock and instructed Moses to call upon his name there. We read the story, Moses and goes and covers himself in the cleft of the rock as he calls upon the name of Yahweh God. And as he's calling upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, the glory of God comes and God proclaims his, his name to Moses. And he says to Moses, I am Yahweh, Yahweh God. And then the Lord fills him with revelation of his attributes, full of compassion and loving kindness. And God literally fills Moses with an understanding of his character and of his glory. You see, the Lord said to Moses, Moses, you can't see my face and live but go cover yourself in the cleft of the rock and call upon my name. And as you do, I'm going to come to you and proclaim my name to you. And this is exactly what happened. You see, the cleft of the rock is a shadow of Jesus. In Jesus, we're in the cleft of the rock. And even as Moses called upon God to reveal his glory from the place of the cleft of the rock, today likewise, beloved, you and I, can call upon Father God to reveal His glory to us through Jesus. And He literally, beloved, will bring us into a deeper and deeper and fuller and fuller of experience of knowing who He really is and of experiencing His glory by His Spirit on our life. Now we know that in this life, we're going to see through the glass dimly that eye is not seen and Ear is not heard the things that God's prepared for those that love Him. But we are being brought into more and more of a discovery of His fullness. You see, the point that I'm wanting to communicate is that you don't have to wait to die and go to heaven to experience the glory of God. It's true that we won't experience His glory in the fullness until we're with Him face to face. Paul said that to live on this earth There's a separation. He said, to live is Christ, he said, but to die is gain. That when we leave the body, we go to be with him in what the Bible calls paradise. So I want to say that absolutely when we leave our bodies, we're going to experience the glory of God in a way that we'll never experience fully on this earth. But on the other hand, I don't want to minimize the fact that even while we're on the earth in the flesh, we can experience the glory of God just like Moses did in the 33rd chapter of the book of Exodus, that God will keep on making himself known to us more and more. You see, Jesus said that we have eternal life. And eternal life, get it now, is an experience. Many people, when they think of eternal life, they just think in concepts of time. They think eternal life means that we're going to live forever. Well, eternal life is uncreated life. It lives forever. And it certainly, and by all means, is true that when we receive eternal life, we live forever. But Jesus defined eternal life as relationship. Jesus said eternal life is to know God and to know Jesus. And so the point is we've been given eternal life. Eternal life carries with it the quality, get it now, of relationship and experience. You see, this is why I'm passionate about Jesus, because I'm experiencing him in the here and in the now. Am I experiencing him as much as I would like to? No, I'm still hungering and yearning for more. Jesus said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. I'm desiring more. But on the other hand, I don't want to minimize that Jesus is making himself real to me and he's making himself real to those of you that are hungering and thirsting for him. See, this is why some people are really passionate about Jesus because they've experienced him. Somehow Jesus has marked their lives where they've literally somehow had an encounter with the glory of God, with the love of God. So I want to pray for you right now. I ask you even right now, just extend your hand towards the television set just as a point of contact with the Lord as I'm praying this prayer for you. Father God, I want to thank you that you're a living God. I want to thank you, King Jesus, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, if you believe, Jesus, you said, 
If we believe in John 13, we would see the glory of God. So right now, Jesus, I just declare and decree over your bride, over your church, over your sons and daughters right now, that as they're reaching out to you in love, that you are reaching back to them, making yourself real to them, imparting your spirit to them, strengthening them in divine life, and they are more and more being brought into the dimension of knowing you in the spirit, walking with you in the spirit, and experiencing your supernatural, glorious reality around their lives. Beloved, we're talking about prayers that resonate with God. I want to encourage you to keep reaching out to God. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, keep doing what Moses did. Keep praying what Moses prayed when he said, Father, Lord, show me your glory. Beloved, this is one of the greatest prayers that you can pray when you're on planet Earth. Keep asking Jesus to show you himself. Keep asking the Father to reveal Himself to you. Paul prayed in the book of Ephesians that God would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And whenever you have a revelation of the knowledge of God, you have an experience, beloved one, of the glory of God. I want you to know, running for Jesus is exciting. Don't settle for less. Keep knocking, saying, Father God, do for me what you did for Moses. Show me your glory. Reveal yourself to me. Make me know you're alive. Let me see you in my life. Let me sense your Holy Spirit leading me. Thank you, Jesus, for making yourself more and more real to me as I keep on pursuing you in my life. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask these things, and for your glory and fame, amen and amen. Well, that's where we were last week, and that was just a bit of an add-on from the examination of Moses' prayer in Exodus 33 and 34. I want to move forward today, and I want to look with you, beloved ones, today at the prayer of Solomon in the book of 1 Kings. Again, we're looking at what are the prayers that we see God answer from His saints in the Hebrew Bible, and then later we'll move into the New Testament, because we know that these are the type of prayers that move God's heart, that we can pray these same prayers, and when we pray them with simplicity, with faith, with a pure heart, God's going to answer us, beloved ones, just like He answered these ones that we're reading about. Did you know that Jesus said that of all the people in the Hebrew Bible, John the Baptist was greater than them? And that he that's born of the Spirit of God in the New Covenant and Jesus is greater than all of them? And that the prayers that we read about in the Hebrew Bible not only had application in their initial historical context, But Paul told us in the book of Corinthians that they were also written for us on whom the end of the ages have come. I want to encourage you to believe that these things that God did for these patriarchs, beloved, He will do for you and He will do for me. I guarantee it by the authority of the Word of God when you're persistent in your prayers, when you pray in faith and you pray from a pure heart. With that said, I'm going to go now to the book of 1 Kings chapter 3, verse number 6 through 13. Hear the word of God. I'm going to skip some verses because it's a long section of Scripture, but let's continue now. 1 Kings chapter 3. Then Solomon said, You have shown great loving kindness to your servant David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart toward you. And you have reserved for him this great loving kindness, that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Yet I am but a little child. I did not know how to go out or come in. Your servant is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen, a great people, who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good or evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Continuing in verse number 10, It was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked for yourself long life, nor have asked for riches, nor have asked for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself discernment to understand justice, behold, I have done according to your words, 
Behold, I have given you a wise and a discerning heart, so that there has been none like you before you, nor shall one arise like you after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there will be none like you among the kings all of your days. What an awesome example, beloved, of how God values the things that the book of Proverbs admonishes us to seek for, which is wisdom. Above all else, Solomon asked for wisdom. I wonder, how many of you have paid close attention to the book of Proverbs? Do you know that Jesus is personified as the person of wisdom in the book of Proverbs? The book of Proverbs is all about this person, wisdom. The book of Proverbs doesn't just talk about wisdom as a series of understandings of correct values, but the book of Proverbs actually speaks of wisdom as a person. The New Testament that Christ, says that Christ Jesus, the New Testament tells us that Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. And this is what Solomon was asking for, beloved ones, in this prayer. He was asking for wisdom, who is the very person of Jesus. He didn't ask for the superficial things. He didn't ask first for riches. He didn't ask first for honor. He didn't ask for the life of his enemies, even though all these things have their proper place in the right order. But no, he asked for the deeper issue. He asked for something, beloved, that was more important to the heart of God. He asked for that thing that would allow him to be a servant. He asked for that thing that would allow him to lead other people in a proper way. And God said, Solomon, because you've asked me for this thing, it has so pleased me. Not only am I going to give you what you asked for, not only will I give you wisdom, not only will I give you a discerning heart to know how to lead my people, to know how to choose righteously, but Solomon, I'm going to even do for you the other things. I'm going to give you riches and honor because your heart and your request has been so pleasing to me. Do you see, beloved ones, why it's so important, important to ask God for the things that really matter to Him? That some prayers carry more weight with the Father than others. That some things that we ask for please Him more than other things that we ask for. Some some of you have had children or grandchildren. Doesn't it please you when your children ask you for certain things like they say, Mommy, Daddy, will you help me to do this? Mommy and Daddy, I need this. And they ask you for something that really shows right values. Doesn't that please you a lot more as opposed to when they beg you for the, for, for the next latest and greatest toy? And sometimes you just feel like that even reflects a spoiled spirit. The point that I'm making, moms and dads and grandparents, that you can tell by your own relationship with your children and grandchildren that some of the things they desire for you is more meaningful than others. If they ask you, for example, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, can we spend time together? I want to do something special with you, just you and me. Doesn't that touch your heart a lot more than if they just ask you for the newest video game? I know one time my little daughter said to me, she said, Daddy, she said, whenever we do something, it's always both me and my sister. I'm not going to say that my children's name, but together she said, Daddy, can we just do something together, just you and me alone? That pleased me so much. I still remember it all those years ago. The point, beloved ones, is that your prayers can move God's heart. And depending on what you're asking Him for, depending on what you're saying to him, will depend, that will determine how he responds to you and the amount of pleasure that he's getting from your communication with him. We read from this prayer in 1 Kings from Solomon that asking God for wisdom, to be good husbands, to be good wives, to be good employers, to be good employees, to be good neighbors, Asking God for wisdom that we would carry ourselves in a way that reflects His glory. Asking Him for wisdom in a way that would reflect His glory to the people in our life that we have influence with, to our neighbors. Asking God for wisdom, beloved, so that we can live in the world in such a way that people will look at our lives and see His glory on it. Asking Him for wisdom to do that, beloved, this pleases Him. And so I want to encourage you to make a part of your daily routine prayer to the Lord. Ask Him for wisdom, just like Solomon did.
you know it takes wisdom to understand what's really happening in life? Some people have the wisdom to be able to discern relationships. They have the wisdom to understand people's hearts. You see, the Lord said that He gave Solomon a wise and a discerning heart. Listen to what the Lord said there in verse number 12. Behold, the Lord said, He says, I have done according to as you have asked, according to your words. And then He said this, Behold, I have given you a wise and a discerning heart. Do you know, beloved, some people walk through life being taken advantage of. Why? They don't have a wise and discerning heart. Don't you want to be able to see through situations? Don't you want to be able to see through people? Don't you want to be able to see the end of a matter? Don't you want to have wisdom to plan for the future? Wisdom, beloved, to make right decisions in your home, at work, in your neighborhood, with your family, in all your relationships. God wants you to ask Him for the wisdom to do this. And you know what? When you knock, when you keep knocking, and you keep asking, and you keep seeking for wisdom, even as the book of Proverbs says, He's going to give it to you. The book of Proverbs says, when you keep seeking wisdom above all else, wisdom will give you a long and a satisfying life, and you'll be crowned with honor. So I want to encourage you today. Seek wisdom in your life. Beloved, if you pray a little, you're going to get a little. Jesus said, up to this point, you have little because you've asked me for little. Jesus said, ask and you'll receive that your joy will be made full. I want to encourage you, as I've been encouraging you, Spend the first time of every day simply sitting before God. When you get up in the morning, don't rush first to check your emails. Don't get on the phone. Don't text anybody. Don't talk to anybody. When you get up every morning, let the first part of your day, beloved, be reserved for God. Sit down before Him. Sit on your couch or wherever it is in your chair. Designate a special place in your house, your prayer room. And when you wake up in the morning, sit before the Lord and say, Lord, did I dream anything last night that you want me to remember? Did you show me anything in my dream last night to help me, to give me understanding? And then have a devotional and read a chapter in the devotional and read it slowly. Jesus Calling is one of the devotionals that I read. Read a chapter from the book of Proverbs. Read a great spiritual autobiography of somebody. Talk to God. Tell God what's on your heart. Ask Him for wisdom. Ask Him to reveal His glory to you. Ask Him for help in your life in the areas that you're struggling. Ask Him to strengthen you with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ask Him to give you a spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Him. Ask Him to help you discern His power and leading in your life. Jesus said, keep asking and you'll receive. Keep knocking and the door will be open. Jesus said, everyone that asks receives. Everyone that seeks finds. And to everyone that asks, the door will be open. Beloved, the scripture tells us to pray ceaselessly. I want to encourage you, believe God. Believe Him for more. 